Ahead of Monday's Juneteenth holiday, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg tweeting that he expects today to be the busiest day for air travel since before the pandemic. Joining us right now to talk about the rebound in air travel as well as inflation-boosted ticket prices is Oscar Munoz. He is the former chairman and CEO of United Airlines. And Oscar, it's a booming time for the airline industry and no slowdown yet in sight in terms of travel. What do you say overall? What kind of uh, what, what do you think the health of, of the economy when it comes to transportation right now? Well, you know, you're seeing the numbers. I just watched them briefly before I came on. And so things are not looking overly negative, which is a good thing. Uh, uh, certainly in line with expectations. I was with some credit card folks. Uh, they say that continues to be robust. Uh, the consumer spending aspect of that. Uh, consumer stocks, of course, uh, have hit uh, some lows and are hopefully recovering soon. But from an industry perspective, the leisure travel, which had flattened for a little while, is back and rolling. And so things are just, I mean, you know, as leaders, we t I tend to, business people, you know, tend to be optimistic because we have to be. Uh, but uh, it's looking it's looking a little better. The rate, you know, the Fed rate hike, uh, hawkish pause, I guess, is the term I've used, I've heard most often, um, still suggesting a higher rate, which would impact some stocks. But, you know, overall, it's feeling a little better. But from the vantage point of someone like me has with regards to consumer spending, at least at the airline level, it's still very fine. I'm in a, I'm in a resort in, uh, in Puerto Rico. So this is back to business travel. It's a large event that I'm speaking at. You know, I don't know, a couple of thousand people that, are, you know, from the firm that are here. So that's beginning to pick up a little bit. So at least from the perspective that we have on the airline space, uh, it's looking OK. And that's uh, what the union, the pilots union might use to bolster its argument to try and get more concessions out of United. Um, Scott Kirby, the CEO at United, has said that they've put a package on the table that's valued, that they value at $8 billion, which would be more than the $7.2 billion deal that Delta signed with its pilots. Uh, the pilots are pushing back, though, and the union chairman there saying, look, they don't think it's worth $8 billion. They don't think it comes up to meeting Delta when it, in terms of what they see just for... Uh, disability benefits, profit sharing. Uh, this, is, this is pretty tricky negotiation to get through. As somebody who knows United very well, what are your expectations? Uh, listen, uh, there are parts of my old job that I do not miss. This would be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, the valuation of all the component pieces, I, first of all, uh, at United, we love our pilots. They're valued. Uh, the growth plan that Scott has put into place is contingent upon that. I mean, all of those things. Uh, it's just a matter of negotiation. And I think both sides tend to look at things just a little differently. Uh, I think United has some of the best perks and benefits associated with, in addition to what's on the table with regards to, to fair, I mean, to, um, to wages. So I just think it's a matter of time before they converge on the right thing. Uh, you will hear a lot of the contention and noise, but other than that, I think we've built a really good relationship over the years after many years of sourness, and uh, it, it will come to bear. And again, the, the valuation, and we all know that world, uh, uh, it, it'll, it'll come together at the right time. The, one re the reason I ask on that, though, is the pilots are, are set to vote on whether to authorize a strike. Now, that doesn't mean a strike will necessarily take place. But if you're somebody who has bought airline tickets on United for the summer, you might be a little concerned about that. You think it'll get to a strike? You know, I don't have that much insight. I'm not about to forecast that or put any kinks in the conversations, the delicate conversations that I'm sure are being had out there. Uh, I think uh, the threats of strike and the threat of holding to to the wage uh, benefits package that the government, that the organization has put forth is always, again, a delicate situation. I'm really confident that this will come to a head and not, importantly, not impact you as a consumer. And that's a very important, uh, you know, sort of focus for both parties. Let's talk a little bit just about the limits on how many more people we can put in the air. I mean, there's questions about the economy, of course, but if the economy continues to chug along, the next question becomes, what are the limitations? Um, what are the things that are holding us back from being able to, let's say, double the number of uh, flights that we see right now? Well, there's, uh, I heard this from a, a doctor, uh, there's, there's functional limitations and there's physical limitations. Um, and I think the physical limitations are twofold. One, uh, everybody wants to grow uh, unless you put in orders for aircraft. 
there's nothing coming in that in that side in the near to moderate terms. So you got a shortage of actual aircraft to do that. You have a pilot shortage, which again gives back to the union conversation. Uh, you know, that, that gives the pilots a little leverage in this space, but um, but that'll work through. And then, and you've heard me talk about this repeatedly, air traffic control is still a big topic. I mean, and, and it, it, with that in place, it's going to just limit, especially on, on uh, domestic um, flights. So all of those things are, gonna, are going to sort of continue to sort of keep capacity at a certain uh, level of growth, uh, which, and then with an increase in level of demand, which gets to the concept of affairs and all that. So that's the, that's the combination of things that's affecting the industry today. Oscar, do you think we need more competition in the airline business at this point? Meaning when you think about it, to the extent that there could be more capacity in the future, or if we want to have more capacity, would we be better off with the current set of airlines having more capacity, or would we be better off with a new entrant in this space trying to compete with those airlines? You know, there, there's plenty of competitors today. Uh, too many, uh, to, I think it, uh, the, the customer service level begins to degrade after you have too many players in too many places. So, so uh, I, I think the limitations that I spoke, aircraft, uh, wages, and, and, and people wanting to work in the industry along with air traffic control are going to keep it at, the, at, at a moderate level. So uh, I think the, the concept of adding more competitors uh, might have an impact at some point in time, but it's probably purely hypothetical at this point, Andrew, because it's just not going to happen. 